All right, so all the stuff right now with Elsie, so in the, what's the previous chapter, 184, I'll just get it that way because I need to get that review out in time. I was getting, I was at a point where I was like close and it was like halfway through the previous chapter, this chapter, and I was like, I'm just going to the next one because, I mean, a lot of the stuff I was going to talk about would, would just be immediately followed up by the next chapter. So Elsie and Ziggy are facing off. This was a very focused chapter on them, both. Both the last chapter and then I think really the important aspects of this chapter, the rest of the chapter was really just set up beyond that. But they're having just kind of like a scuffle and you know, you're just seeing a couple kind of you know, free range moves. Ziggy's just using gravity as gravity does, grabbing stuff around him, just free range moving. I was happy to see him use both a new attack. Was it his in the news chapter? It was it's like Magimek attack Inferno. And then he had his uh, using gravity pump, which is actually really cool. I, I like seeing attacks that are in the same branch of the same power, but obviously also diverging out just because like we know that he should know gravity comet. This is one that talked to Shiki, so we know that he shouldn't have that at his disposal. So it's just cool to see him have it. Outside of that, I mean Elsie definitely was was in a bad spot. I'm curious to know like would this version of Ziggy win like have won if he didn't have that that kind of uh trick stab? Because obviously Elsie was doing really good, and I mentioned before the thing about Ziggy that he has at his that he has at his disposal that you don't get with most bad guys. But you know, as a machine, this is like one of the things that he can exploit so easily is he can take losses just fine, and he just has to repair and advance his you know his robotic form and his other minions according to what just happened, which would make sense to me. I think that if the Eden Zero ends up pulling a big win here, but in the process, Ziggy's able to analyze all their abilities, upgrade the Dark Stars after their fights that are going to go on, and just be more prepared for what's to come. I do, again, I still say that I do not want Ziggy to get more abilities. The only thing that I'm hoping he does get would be like Ether Gears that are that are just kind of like additional things to his move set, kind of like how he's got the the warp power now, so now he can do portals and stuff. It's not like it wasn't like a, a whole new extra way of of combat abilities. It was more just like a utility thing. I don't know. And I'm hoping we get more stuff like that, only because like if he gets too crazy, it's like what is Shiki gonna do? Because Shiki, I assume, is only gonna have his one ability. This cat's trying to eat a spoon. Um, get out of here! I'm making a video right now, but. I mean, right now, so this stuff, I will say, like, first off, I, I want to go with, like, the, the new attack that Elsie Edwards or her total eclipse. That was cool. I thought that was just really neat that she had, like, you know, a, a unique attack to her home planet. I wonder if that's going to end up having any reference in her backstory or if it's just, you know, a cool space thing to go with, you know, the total eclipse name. Cool as well. Uh, there was uh, one other thing that I, I took a little bit of attention to. I, I know a lot of people were kind of, you know, we're not against this too. I don't think it's something that I'm the only one who saw. But when Elsie used that form, her Lendard Star Drain, she had those, uh, I don't know what they're called, but those weird little kind of things in Holy's hair. Or not, not, uh, not Holy, sorry, uh, Feather, right? I mean, I'm getting them mixed up, I think. Holy is the, oh crap, Holy is the support one. Feather is the... No, no, I think it's reversed. It's reversed. Yeah, Feather, Feather is the support one. Holy is the one that they're dealing with right now. But she, I, I'm willing to bet that we're going to, you know, get something with her character soon because it's very clear that Crow is her main thing and she doesn't really care that much about Cheeky and whatnot. But her her whole thing, like, I'm, I'm very curious as to, like, where she's going to play out in all this, like, in terms of the overall arc. Because I, I can get estimations on, like, where her personal story arc is going to go. Obviously, want to get revenge on Crow for some reason. But how she's going to play into other events is going to be the big thing. Because she doesn't seem to be getting these fights. Because the big thing right now with the, the battle, again, I think Ziggy... I feel like if Ziggy doesn't leave this fight and then, like, upgrade his robot self and everything immediately following this, then, I don't know, he's just going to take a... Like, he's going to take a personal L as a robot bad guy. Because, again, that's, that's the biggest thing for robot opponents is... Taking a loss for them is a completely different scenario than saying taking a loss for, you know, just your average bad guy. Because of that machine aspect is, is something that, like, 
other characters can do with different abilities. But it's something that like machine people just kind of get as a default thing that they possibly can do. And we've already seen it to a degree when we saw, was it Brigadine and Killer get destroyed against Jaguar? And I mean, Ziggy didn't carry, he's built new ones, built new and better ones. And that's again the thing about machines that I think is going to play into a lot of things. It's just like how, you know, just upgrade, get rid of the old one, keep the new one. Obviously, from a standpoint of the machines having personality and soul and consciousness and whatnot, and, you know, being friends to people that are, you know, members of the main cast, the humans, and pretty much all that, like everything that you would, you know, make sense and connect together to be like, yeah, these are pretty much people. The whole idea of uh, pretty much scrapping them whenever something better gets along completely conflicts with that. And I think that's one of the things with Ziggy that needs to really be emphasized because of how much it, it fits the story wall conflicting with Cheeky's personality and viewpoints and everything. So that that in itself is a big kind of question mark for me. The, the whole thing about like Ziggy and the machines, I'm really hoping we, we see that this arc. Again, I'm fine if Ziggy and crew take some L's. It just is going to depend on the follow up for it. Like Ziggy can just be a dismembered head. As long as he as a robot is still functional and still going, he can build himself a new body, a better body and say like, oh, well, what were what were my weaknesses in the last play? What, what was it that, you know, when my shortcomings, bam, adjust it, fix that, work around that, try, you know, set up anti measures for your opponents and everything that they can do. Uh, like there's there's a lot that like there's a lot that really could be done with all this. It's just going to depend on what Mishima wants to do. The whole machine thing and you know, the machine motive. I'm not a huge fan of, of like robotics and machine based things. They have I've said this the whole time with Zero. I like I like Mishima's blend of this and being like a magic science. But obviously I'm more of a, of a fantasy guy than a sci-fi guy. But again, one of the things about robot characters that I think should never really be overlooked, at least like robot big bad guys because like you know just some random robot who cares if they fix themselves to come back but you know a, a big powerful bad guy especially because ziggy ziggy should have preparations for if something goes really bad because again he unlike a lot of characters you reduce him to a head he's fine as long as his robotic core is still functional he can come back whereas obviously like you know you're a human even if your brain and your heart is intact, someone cuts your head off, you're done. So, like, it, there's there's just a, a good amount of... There's just a good amount of kind of, like, possibilities with what he could do uh, and, and around that. And I think we've gotten glimpses so far, you know, with the upgrade Brigadine and Killer. So, hopefully we'll get that with Ziggy. I, I would really like that. I'm fine again if, if a bad guy ends up taking a loss, as long as it's done in a way that is beneficial to the tone around the character like if a character like a character loses but like they there there's like a big development thing that comes out of or maybe it's something that awakens like a new ability or you know something that just kind of like really tacks on extra the character whereas like a loss just triggers something additional that advances them in a big way so like the i mean the the only other part like i'd say really about Trevor is like you know you got some of the normal fight stuff like he's just like unloading on her once he's got like a full open opportunity and then justice comes in the whole thing with like justice saving elsie i get like i i understand the i understand both sides of like that whole situation because obviously some people don't like the fact that he came and helped her and he had the whole like you know nobody kills you nobody's gonna kill you but me kind of thing which again i i can understand that's something that you would be able to like predict pretty fairly with justice, but I, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's one of those things where it's like, if you understand events in the story, then yeah, he's gonna, he's, he's gonna probably gonna try and, and get her out of there because he's gonna wanna kill her. But also on top of that, I think something that I'm, I'm my fingers are crossed on with justice is he, he talks to her and, you know, has a moment with Elsie. Not like a, yeah, let's put our differences aside, but it's like, yeah, I fucking hate you but Ziggy's a bigger problem and you know what what is it the enemy of my enemy is my friend well I guess really you can kind of look at it like that and be like well then could Ziggy be his friend but obviously you know because Ziggy's more of a, of a big threat right now than Elsie because Elsie's got more personal stuff with him whereas like she's not trying to just go around and and massacre and slay humans whereas he is so I feel like with Justice it, again it's one of those things where it's like yeah I still hate you I still want to kill you but one I want that for myself and two, 
there's a bigger problem. There's something that's a problem with, for both of us. Like, it would make sense for Ziggy, or not Ziggy, Justice, to be like, yeah, I can save her and then kill her later. Or, you know, I can let her die and lose a very strong potential fighter against Ziggy. Like, there's, there are too many things for him that are, they're like kind of in his favor, but we'll see. Ziggy, Ziggy's definitely looking good coming out of this arc. So, I don't know, Justice, Justice having his time though, I'm, I was expecting him to join the fight and not pull out of there. I will say it's very clear though, after seeing that is Jill, is a, almost a Jill, Justice is way faster than Ziggy, at least has gravity comment. Like he blitz right by him. He just zipped right by the dude. And I don't know really how it's going to work with Ziggy later because like with overdrive, I wonder how that's going to work with him. But like, we know this wasn't his full power, but I guess it wasn't with Justice either. So Justice just might be faster. Either way, it's, it, it's something I just to notice. It's like, it is a fast character. Someone like throughout each series, you know, the, the I mark people have been shown to be extremely fast and extremely capable fighters. So the last thing really in this is the whole erosion arena. I thought that was going to have to do with this chapter. I thought maybe Ziggy was going to take her there and, you know, do some crazy dark things. And then, like, I don't know, like move around acid with this gravity attack or something. But instead, it's, you know, we got like the four core fighters. We got she, well, sort of, because we don't have Jin, we have Rebecca. I mean, on Rebecca, but it's like. Obviously, if you're going to think of the fighters that you sort of Jen's going to come before Rebecca. But I mean, Rebecca's more important of a character in the story. But we have them versus the four dark stars. I thought, uh, I saw a fan art and like how some of them were, were matched up. I remember, I think it was like Shiki and Clown, but it's actually like looking like Shiki and Wizard, which I think makes a lot of sense because of the stuff with Witch. And obviously, Wizard is the upgraded, uh, you know, version of the New Ziggy Empire over the occupation that Witch was at. So we'll see how some of these matches go. Um, the whole match setup. So right now, it was a, well, I think it's Wise versus Wise is I think versus Clown. I think Rebecca's versus Killer. Homura's against Brigadine and Cheeky's against Wizard. I think. I believe the one I'd say I'm I'm looking forward to most is Clown. I like his design. I'm I'm worried he'll get destroyed, but I know that I think I can guess if he is destroyed, he'll get a new robot form. But at the same time, it'll make me sad that if he's destroyed. I, I'm hoping, though, if he... Like, he gets at least, like, a chapter fight. I want to see what this guy can do. And I hope he has a cool power. I don't need to be broken. But I'm hoping he just has a really good ability. But anyway, other than that, comment below. Thumbs up the video. If you like, button, subscribe button, check out my other videos. But that, appreciate it. Subscribe, and thank you all for listening. Bye.